In this Easy Ed video lecture, we are going to learn what are iterative and loop type of control statements in C. The various types of loops, namely while, do while, for, and special or control statements, namely go to, break, continue. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. Let's start with the iterative statements first. Repetitive execution of certain statements is termed as iteration or looping. A loop has simply a statement or collection of statements that is executed repeatedly until a certain condition is met, after which the execution moves on to the next statement. For example, if we write a program to convert temperature from Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius, wherein to convert 10 different values, the user will have to run the program 10 times. We can use the loops through which the user will have to run the program only once and repeatedly enter 10 values to get the output in one go. Loops can either be a pretest loop or a post-test loop. C has three loop constructs, namely for, while, do while, out of which while and for are pretest loops, and do while is a post-test loop. Let's take an example of products being packed on a conveyor belt. If it is predecided that only 10 products are supposed to be packed, then a count on the number of products can be kept at entry level before packaging or at exit after packaging. If the count is determined before packaging, then it is called as pre-testing, or else if determined at exit level, then it is termed as post-testing. Let's take a look at pre-test loops first. In a pre-test loop, the condition is checked before the start of each iteration. If the test condition is evaluated to be true, then the statements associated with the pre-test loops construct are executed repeatedly till the condition becomes false. If the test expression evaluates to be false, then the statements associated with the construct are skipped and the statements next to the loop are executed. What are post-test loops then? In a post-test loop, the code is executed once and after the completion of the loop, the test condition is tested. If the condition evaluates true, then the loop repeats itself and if the expression is false, then the loop stops and execution moves on to the next statement after the loop. Let's learn the basic working of the loop. The processes associated with all the loops are Step 1 is initialization of the counter variable. The initialization process assigns a value to the counter variable. Step 2 is evaluating the test condition. The test condition is evaluated and based on its result. Decision is taken whether to continue execution of the loop statements or to jump outside the loop and execute the statements outside it. When the result is true, the statements within the loop are executed and when false, the statements inside the loop are ignored and the control jumps to the statement outside the loop. And the last step is incrementing or decrementing the counter variable. The counter variable is updated every time the statement in the loop are executed. The loop is executed till the time the counter variable reaches a certain value. Loops can be programmed as event control loop or counter control loop. In event control loop, the occurrence of an event changes the test condition from true to false. This is used when the number of iterations is not known. When the number of iterations is known, then the counter control loop is used. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. Let's learn the three types of loops starting with while loop. This is the general form. While is a pretest loop. It uses the test condition to control the loop. It also evaluates the test condition and if the result of the evaluation is true, then the loop is executed once again. Thus the iterations are dependent on the test condition's result. The statements would be repeatedly executed till the value of the test condition becomes false. To use while statement, the test expression should have a loop control variable. The initialization of the loop control variable has to be done before the loop starts and updating the loop variable should be done within the body of the loop. Here, in this example, the loop is initialized by assigning D a value. Then, the test condition is evaluated. As the result of evaluation is non-zero, the statements within the loop are executed 
and the counter variable is updated by decrementing it by 1. Again, the test expression is evaluated. This process will continue till the result of evaluation is 0, that is when d is equal to 0. As soon as the result of evaluation becomes 0, the statement exactly after the loop is executed. A while loop is called as indefinite loop as the number of times it will iterate is undetermined. Let's take the conveyor example to understand the while loop. Suppose it is predecided that the number of products to be packed is 10. The sensor keeps a track on the counter's value whether it has reached 10 or not. When the first product is placed on the conveyor, the counter is set to 1. The sensor tests the condition by checking if counter value is less than 10. As counter value is 1, the product is allowed to move on the conveyor for packaging. The product is packed. Then the counter is incremented to allow the next product. Again, the test condition is evaluated to check if counter is not equal to 10. If it's true, then the product is allowed to be packed. This process continues till the counter reaches 10. The sensor won't allow the 11th product to move on the conveyor as the condition has become false. Now let's try the program illustrating the use of while loop. This program finds the average of five numbers. Let's declare the main function, the variables n, which stores the numbers. Sum is used to maintain the summation and count is used as the counter variable. Counter count is initialized to zero. Ask the user to enter the numbers and store each value in the variable n. We are needed to use while loop here to scan five consecutive values and the number to the value stored in the sum. Increment the counter, find the average and finally print the average. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. Let's move on to studying the next loop, do while loop. Do while is just like a while loop except the test condition is checked at the end of the loop rather than the start. This has the effect that the content of the loop are always executed at least once. So this turns out to be the basic syntax of do while loop. Thus the loop is executed at least once and then the test condition is evaluated. If it is true then the block of statements are executed again. Till the result of evaluation turns out to be false all the statements are executed. As soon as the result is false, the statements exactly after the loop block are executed. Thus, it will iterate at least one time. Do while loop is considered as indefinite loop. It is considered to be a post-test loop since the test expression is tested at the end of the loop. Let's take the same conveyor example to understand do while loop. As it is predecided that the number of products to be packed is 10, the sensor keeps a track on the counter's value whether it has reached 10 or not, and it is placed at the exit of the conveyor. As the first product is placed on the conveyor, the counter is set to 1, and the product is allowed to move on the conveyor for packaging. When the product is packed, the counter is incremented, then the sensor tests the condition by checking if counter value is less than 10. As counter value is 2, the next product is allowed to be placed on the conveyor. Again, the test condition is evaluated check if counter is not equal to 10. If it's true, then the process continues till the counter reaches 10. The sensor won't allow the 11th product to move on the conveyor as the condition has become false. Let's write a program illustrating the use of do while loop. This program finds the average of 5 numbers. Let's declare the main function and the variables n stores the numbers. Sum is used to maintain the summation and count is used as the counter variable. Counter count is initialized to zero. Ask the user to enter the numbers. We are needed to use do while loop here to scan five consecutive values. This will make the statements in the braces to be executed at least once. Now store each value in the variable n. Then add the number to the value stored in sum. Increment the counter. At the exit of this block, the test condition is placed to check if numbers are not added. Lastly, find the average and finally print the average. Seriously, 
Pay attention. This is important. Let's now look at the last loop, namely for loop. The for loop is similar to while, it's just written differently. Basic syntax of the loop is this. In this, expression 1 initializes the counter variable. Expression 2 is a conditional expression. As long as this condition is true, loop will iterate and expression 3 is a modifier, which may be the simple increment of a variable. A for loop is a pretest loop. It is called as a definite loop as the programmer knows exactly how many times it will be repeated. A simple example is i is initialized to 0. The test expression is tested if i is less than or equal to 5. If true, then the printf statement is executed, else the next instruction after the loop is executed. The counter variable i is incremented. Control jumps to the loop test condition. It should be noted that all the three parts of the previous loops are included in one statement here. Let's take the conveyor example to understand for loop. For example, again here, it is predecided that the number of products to be processed is 10. The sensor keeps a track on the counter's value whether it has reached 10 or not. When the first product is placed on the conveyor, the counter is set to 1. The sensor tests the condition by checking if counter value is less than 10. As counter value is 1, the product is allowed to move on the conveyor for packaging. Then the counter is incremented to allow the next product. Again, the test condition is evaluated to check if the counter is not equal to 10. If it's true, then the product is allowed to be processed. This process continues till the counter reaches 10. The sensor won't allow the 11th product to move on the conveyor as the condition has become false. Let's write a program illustrating the use of the for loop. This program finds the average of 5 numbers. Let's declare the main function. The variables n which stores the numbers. Sum is used to maintain the summation and count is used as the counter variable. Ask the user to enter the numbers and store each value in the variable n. We need to use for loop here. In the for statement, the count count is initialized to 0. The test condition is placed here along with which counter is incremented. Inside the loop, scan 5 consecutive values and the number to the value stored in sum. Find the average and finally print the average. Let's learn the special control statements, namely break, continue, go to. Let's focus on break statement first. What are brakes used in vehicles for? When brakes are applied to the vehicle, the vehicle immediately stops at that very place. In C2, brake keyword is used to stop the current execution. Whenever it is used, the execution from the current statement is terminated and the control is transferred to the statement outside the loop. The brake statement is used in loop constructs such as for, while, do while and switch to terminate their execution. Within nested statements, the brake statement terminates only the do while, for, switch or while statement that immediately encloses it. Let's see how break works and how it is implemented in programs. We started by declaring a main function. Define its scope by giving it braces. Then we declare the variable name t. For loop is used to loop infinitely till user enters 10. If the user enters 10, then the loop breaks and the control is transferred to the next statement after the loop. And the last statement, which is a printf statement to display a text. Continue is another keyword which is used for unconditional branching. While crossing a signal, a driver will continue to cross the signal on seeing the green light. Similarly in C, the continue keyword is used to stop the current iteration and jump on to the next iteration. The syntax is just the keyword continue followed by a semicolon. Continue statement does not terminate the loop, but it goes on to the test condition to check the test condition in do while and while loops and it updates the expression in the for loop. Let's write a program to understand the use of continue keyword. The program prints all the numbers from 1 to 5 except for 3. Start by declaring the main function. 
declare a counter variable c and assign it a value 1. Using the while program, we will loop till c is less than or equal to 5. If checks whether c is equal to 3, if true, then we place continue here in the if block. Continue will make the control jump onto the test condition. If c is not equal to 3, then we will print the number. c is a loop counter, so on each iteration it is incremented. Let's learn the last unconditional branching statement go to. The go to statement is a jump statement which jumps from one point to another point within a function. The syntax is just the keyword go to followed by the label. A label tags any statement within the program. A label statement can be used anywhere in the function above or below the go to statement. The control is unconditionally transferred to location label by the label name. Let's write a single program to understand the use of go to statement. The code here simply asks the user to enter the character y to continue and n to stop. We declare the main function firstly. Ask the user to input a character. We label this statement as i1. Store the value in a. Using if, we check whether the entered value is y, then we print hi and transfer the control to the statement labeled i1. Else, we print by and the program ends. Let's take a quick review of what we've learned here. We started with iteration and repetitive statements, wherein repetitive execution of certain statements is termed as iteration or looping. Then there are two types of loops, namely pretest loops and post-test loops. In a pretest loop, the condition is checked before beginning of each iteration. In a post-test loop, the code is executed once after the completion of the loop. The test expression is tested. The looping process has three steps. Step 1. Initialization of the counter. Step 2. Is testing the condition. Step 3. Is updating the counter variable. Next we learned that loops can be programmed as event control loops and counter control loops. After which we learned the while loop which is a pretest loop as the test condition is placed at the beginning of the loop. Whereas do while loop which is a post test loop as the test condition is placed at the end of the loop. This loop is executed at least once. Lastly, the for loop, which is again a pretest loop as the test condition is placed at the beginning of the loop. It is very similar to the while loop in working. Then we moved on to learning the unconditional branching statements, which are break, continue and go to. Here, break is used to terminate the loop and control moves onto the statement after the loop. And continue keyword is used to stop the current iteration cycle in the loop and start from the new iteration cycle. Lastly, go to is used to include jumps within the program. This makes the program unstructured and so it should not be used often in program.